you know what? I'm going to start by saying this like this. Get this little technicality out the way. Today marks the 20th anniversary of the shooting of Tupac Shakur. Though technically he died on September 13th, 1996. So, I'm going to say that this marks the 20th anniversary this week. Marks the 20th anniversary of the shooting and passing of Tupac Shakur. Who I feel is the greatest rapper of all time. I didn't say he was the best rapper of all time, but he was the greatest rapper of all time. When you look at his success, you look at um, how influential he's been as a rapper, even today, 20 years after his death, uh, you look at his productivity. to have been only 25 years old when he died and to have that much material come out and good material by the way come out um, after his demise the way that he's felt uh, his peers feel about him the way he's so in you know uh, successful uh, successful excuse me generations of rappers including a guy like Lil Wayne you can see the Tupac influence with him um I mean, you know, everybody's list is different, but me, the top the top guys, man, are Tupac and Biggie. Now, I know some people, it's going to be different than that, you know, but that's just me. It, it, you know, some people might say, hey, it's Rakim. You know, they might feel it's, it's, it's Rakim and Curtis Blow, whatever. Um, maybe some younger cats, they think it might be Jay-Z and Oz. I think it's Tupac and Biggie, the two greatest rappers of all time. And we don't need to handle it. And please, in my comment section, please don't get into this like argument about who's the greatest rapper well, this video is not for that okay seriously don't disrespect this man's um, memory today and this week by getting into that argument about who's better than him that shit does not matter right now okay um I think that the best way I can do this video is to just sit back and think about the last few months of his life and I saw this coming it's sort of like with, when, the, when I talk about comedy I saw it with Chris Farley I could see it coming with Tupac it wasn't food it wasn't drugs it was the way he lived his life just fast and it was like he the thing that I really saw I remember that summer let's go to July 1996 I remember that for some reason, I just always remember that I was with my, with my boy Al House. And I was chilling with Al, I was listening to some Tupac. Because my boy Al, he really was a big fan of Bone Thugs and Harmony back then. This is when we were in 10th grade going to 11th grade. My boys back then were Al and Jason and Isaac, Nate, Beat, Lewis, Luther, who else? Lamont, T-Man, Biggie, but not the Biggie that, not the rapper Biggie, it was another guy named Biggie who unfortunately was himself murdered uh, a couple years after high school off of stupid shit, man. That's pretty much the, cr- the click, that was pretty much old Kenny Boo Roderick. That's about it. But I was over my boy Allen House, man, and um, we were listening to some Tupac, man. It might have been like Hit Him Up or something like that. I, I think that was what we were listening to. And at that time, you gotta remember, man, this is when the East Coast, West Coast thing really was popping off, man. I mean, this was before social media, this was before the internet, really. Internet was like in this really, really embryonic stage then, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, most part, most people didn't have internet. You had to be like a fabulously wealthy individual <laughs> to really have internet back then. Um, although that would change quickly the next year and a couple years after that, but still, for the most part, for the very most part, uh, 99.5% of people in America. Uh, if you were following this uh, back then, 
maybe even a higher percentage of that, maybe like 99.9%. But anyway, it does, this few, that's, doesn't matter. Um, if you're following the, that rivalry and, and, you know, the little nuggets back then, you had to, you had to read Source Mag, you had to read, um, I'm trying to remember what XXL was in publication yet then. I can't remember. But I know I was, back then I was reading the Source Mag. I was reading like, you know, other different little lesser known hip hop magazines. You had to look at MTV, BET, you know, you had to listen to um, the CDs, the rappers, and, and, and the video cassettes, and music videos to look for you know, um, hidden little messages or, you know, whatever. And at that time, like I said, you know, Tupac and Biggie were feuding with the East Coast, West Coast rivalry. Tupac was with uh, Death Row and Biggie was with Bad Boy. I'm being on Virginia, you know, being in Virginia, I was rooting for the East Coast. Uh, but not everybody where I'm at was rooting for the East Coast. Some people were riding with Pac and them. But the thing about it is, what what really got me was I started noticing that it wasn't just on wax. You know, it wasn't just looked at as entertainment. People literally <coughs> would beef with you if you didn't like or ride with the rapper. They, I mean, it got to the point where it would be physical violence. That's when I realized, like, this is getting to, this is getting out of hand. This is getting out of hand. And then, I, you know, I learned about all the people that, Tupac was beefing with back then. I mean, of course you had Biggie, but you also had Mob Deep. You had uh, Jay Z. Okay, you had him beefing with Chino XL, and he was beefing with Nas. If I haven't said him, beefing with the Fugees. You know what I'm saying? Like beefing with even within Death Row, beefing with Dr. Dre. Not to mention his little beast with various, uh, you know, gangs and shit in L.A. I mean, you could just see it, man. I'm telling my boy, I said, man, Tupac is going to get killed, man. I just, I, I could just see it, man. Like, it, it, something's going to happen to this guy, man. And, I remember seeing Tupac on television in an interview oh boy, what was it it was early September very early September I think it was an award show it was on MTV he had a suit on I remember uh, Snoop had like his hair like perm straight or some shit and I think Suge was there I think Suge was there and they was talking and you know Tupac was talking his shit man and Whatever, you know. I didn't think much about it. And then I remember that weekend, Mike Tyson had a fight. He was fighting Bruce Seldon, who literally just fucking, I mean, went down from the air of a... <laughs> he went down from the woof, uh, the, the whiff of the air of a would-have-been Mike Tyson... What was it? Uh... Right hook I can't remember if it was the left hook or right hook that Tyson threw But it didn't connect But Selden still went down And whatever I had no idea Because like I said We didn't have social media like that I had no idea of the incident that happened After the fight You know what I'm saying I do remember looking at the fight I think I went over a friend of mine's house, watched the fight. That Sunday, I don't know what the fuck I did. I probably, this was September, I don't know what the fuck I did. But I know I didn't really watch much television that day. I might have was like fucking looking at movies or whatever. Um, trying to remember the football season that started that weekend or not. It possibly football season might have started. Maybe that had occupied me or something, but I had no knowledge of whatever. You know, school had just started, whatever. 
So I think football, now that I think about it, school had just started. So football probably did premiere that weekend. That's probably what occupied me now that I think about it. So it wasn't until Monday. I come to school. I'm at the bus stop, actually. And I hear people say, Hey, yo, Mike, did you hear about what happened? Cause I'm like, what? What the fuck happened? Tupac got shot. So... The first thing that popped in my head is sort of similar to what Biggie has said, you know, in the interview that, you know, we all see now. I'm thinking when they say he got shot, like, okay, he got shot in the arm, or, you know, he got shot in the shoulder. I'm thinking like a Hollywood movie type shit, you know, um, shot in the leg, you know, some stupid shit happened in a club or, you know, just some dumb shit, you know. Um, I'm out of flesh room, you know, whatever. Been in the hospital for a couple of days, maybe a week. Uh, Noah Park a couple of days. And he'll be out and, you know, causing havoc. You know, 25 years old, I mean, he's immortal. He's young. We're all young. He's 25. I'm 16. You're 17. We're 15. We're at the peak of our powers. We're, we're immortal. But then I go to school... And because at that time, I don't know if much detail had came out yet. I, I didn't really get a gist of how wounded he was until I remember I got to school. And I think some of the people, some of my classmates were telling me that he was fucked up. Like, fucked up. Like, shot four times, fucked up. Like, I think like shot, what, twice in the chest or some shit or once in the chest. Then when I look at the, um, the television program, I think it was called uh, Channel One, where CNN's Anderson Cooper got went, got his start. He used to be on there with Anderson Cooper and Lisa Ling, back when Anderson Cooper had like brown hair or some shit. And um, they were talking about it. And like I said, Tupac was fucked up, like on a ventilator. And that's when it hit me, like, whoa, okay, this is, this is, he's critical. He's extremely critical. He might not make it out of this shit. But you still think, like, okay, Tupac's going to make it. I mean, look at all the shit he's been through, man. He's already been shot before, okay? He's been through all this other bullshit in his life, you know? He's going to make it because we're young He's young. We're invincible. Then I read, I think it might have been like three or four days after he got shot. Matter of fact, it was that Wednesday in the newspaper. So I think it would happen that Tuesday. It said Tupac Shakur's right lung was removed. When I saw that, even though I was only 16 years old, I had some medical knowledge. That was telling me right there that it's a that that kind of sounded to me like maybe his organs were starting to shut down a little bit. Um, probably some type of what that was telling me is that his respiration respira- respiratory system was being compromised and the ailing lung had to be removed to try to sort of you know alleviate that problem when you're talking about removing a lung I mean that's a lifelong thing like I mean people can survive one lung but I mean yeah that, that, that really made me think man this guy I don't know if he's going to make it now I don't think he's going to make it and you know then Thursday went through and and I remember I was asking people man like you hear anything on the radio you hear anything on the radio and it was like well you know Tupac's still alive man you know he's still alive like okay okay maybe he's going to make it man maybe he's going to make it you know maybe he's going to make it you know I mean they, they took his lung away man you know he's going to live 
you know I mean I know I said all these things about him before man but you know I don't want dude to die man you know then, then I start reminiscing like a little bit like damn man all these years I was talking about he was you know hellraiser but I don't want the guy to die man you know and then that Friday the last day of that week in school I remember um, earlier cause remember he was in California I'm in the, uh, I'm in Virginia so there's a three hour separation I had no idea that about 7.03 a.m. that morning as I'm on my way to school Tupac Shakur is being pronounced dead at 4.03 a.m. Pacific time as I go to school that's when I hear the rumors Yo, George, man. Big George said, man, I was talking to him earlier, man. He said on the radio that said he died, man. No, oh, man, that's just a rumor, man. It's not true, man. It's not true. But then later on throughout the day, you know, you hear it more and more. Tupac died, yo. He died. He died. And I was still in, you know, I was like in denial. Like, no, nah, man. I, look, look, I can't just go off word of mouth. I got to hear it. And then uh, somebody brought the teacher let us get the radio, man. We listened to, uh, matter of fact, that's how long ago it was. I think it was still Power 93. No, I think they did make the change already. It was Power 92. We listened to Power 92. And that's when the uh, DJ announced that Tupac Shakur had passed away. And, uh... I remember that day, man. It was like, I'm telling you, man, like, <laughs> I, I'm going to use a term, man, that uh, might sound offensive to people, but I mean, it, it's just something that black people say amongst each other. You know, it, it, was, it, was, it was one day where I wish nigga gossip wasn't true. You know, like a lot of times. You know, uh, that st- nigga gossip can lead to like a whole bunch of like malarkey. Like, what the fuck? How, what the fuck? You know, mistruths and misinformation, a little bit of truth and twist of this get fucked all over, and the shit ain't true. But there was one time where the shit was true, man. And um, uh, I remember, I, I tell you like this too: if you're not black or if you're not too much cool, if you're not into rap. The way that people felt after 9-11, which is another ominous, another infamous, I guess, uh, anniversary is coming up. The way that people felt, the way that communities were, in the black community, that's how it was when Tupac died. It was a very, very, very sad day when he died. I remember uh, music stations were playing his music and and uh, 20 years and this you know past year this year actually his mother Feeney passed away So, those are my memories of Tupac Shakur on those, in that time period. And of course, um, as time has gone on, I remember right after that, there were a whole bunch of like clones, like rap clones. I mean, people just trying to sound like Tupac, trying to steal his swag. And I'll be honest with you, man, even though I like him as a rapper, man, DMX stole Tupac's style to an extent, man. I mean, even the guys that, that look, even if you're a DMX fan, you gotta you gotta see where I'm coming from with that man. He, he did steal it to an extent. Uh, some of his like mannerisms and shit, or his swag or whatever. Just look to an extent, shit. 
But Tupac can never be duplicated, man. And he's the most influential rapper of all time. You don't want to call him the greatest. And you have to say he's at least the most influential. And it's just funny to me, too, how a lot of people who did not like him, uh, people who he didn't like in life, now all of a sudden want to proclaim how much they love him, you know, or how much they did love him for whatever reason, doing duets with him and doing songs about him and dedicating him. You know, good and well that when he was alive, he didn't want to do nothing more than to smack the taste out your fucking mouth. But, um, those are my memories of Tupac Shakur, man. Tell me your memories, man.